What's up, nerds? Welcome back to The Raging Rainbow. My name is Dylan, doing a comic book review today for Crush and Lobo number one. And well, as you can see, it is Pride season, so I guess let the bad Pride stories begin. So as I mentioned, guys, it is Pride season. And so that's basically what we got in this comic. It's a Pride story. It's about Crush and his uh, her girlfriend, uh, Katie. I mean, it says Crush and Lobo on the front, but this is, that was really an afterthought. I guarantee it. But anyway, let's just kind of get into what we have here because, oh my God, was it ridiculous trying to get through Crush's dialogue. I mean, this is only an eight-issue miniseries, and I don't even know... If I can bother to get through that eight issue, if I have to deal with eight issues of listening to Crush talk like this, my name is Crush. Some would say I'm a complex character. I do not hang out with anyone who would use that description in a sentence. This is a flash forward bit of a mess. I don't actually know if we're even going to come back to this scene, but it's really not, but it's a really nice punch. So why not? makes you think like this poor sap did that if you could understand my miss my mess you would understand like the universe or something like the universe or something anyway okay yeah i'm already boring myself next scene this is where the story actually start this is where the actual story starts or whatever close enough <sighs> like a week earlier or something this is in New York, in case you care, or it's not obvious. Oh my god, we're, we're not even, this is literally the first, I've turned the first page. I've turned the first page and I wanted to rip it out. So, she keeps going and says, um, what, this is also another fight. You couldn't, you couldn't tell? A fight into a fight? Is that good story structure? No. And then she says, no, it's not. Thank you. Hey, Crush, don't you usually fight with the Teen Titans? Yeah, she's not with them anymore. Nobody gives a shit. No, shut up. See what I mean? Nobody gives a shit either. So she goes over to who cares? And then she's like saying, you know, I told you if I saw you again. And then he tries to threaten her. She says, you shouldn't threaten me because I guess she's intimidating. And then she does this where she says, look away if you're sensitive. Is anything happening here offensive to a sensitive audience? She kicked him. She kicked him. She said, look away if you're squeamish and then kicked him. None of the, and like he didn't, nothing even happened to him. He's still fully intact. Like, and we all we saw was like her actual foot. Like we don't even see anything that happens to him. He just goes flying, we're told. So anyway, or no, they do actually show it like where he goes flying into space. So again, why were we supposed to look away? Like nothing that happened there was even remotely disturbing. So she says, now I'm a freelancer, solo butt kicking, whatever. Why am I summing up for you? I don't know. I didn't ask. You have internet access, right? Look it up. Oh, okay. We're doing this thing of breaking the fourth wall. Because everybody who we want to be funny needs to be Deadpool. So she pulls out her stupid phone with this ridiculous ass case. And then, of course, we can see, ah, it's Katie's birthday. And, of course, she has to tell us, Katie's my girlfriend. So we get that part in there. And then she goes over. She's getting ready to go over to Katie's like party or whatever on her bike. So she shows up and shows up to this very nice party. I mean, damn, look at this. So she shows up and like her friends are all excited to see her. Like Katie's friends are all excited to see her. And so they at first think her name is Trish. She says it's Crush. And so they're all excited. She decides to just go ahead and go in. And then all of a sudden... Katie's parents come up to her and they're they look very disturbing but at least they're being like overly nice and friendly like they're excited that she's here they go up and like they're saying hi to her and everything and then 
The mom says, you must be Tasha, to which she does this sociopath routine where she's like, actually, it's crush, like as in destroy or just like smush politely. Calm down, meth head. Like, what the fuck? So she goes on and bumps the cake and like knocks it down. But before she can actually knock it down, Katie comes over and saves it. And what what the hell? What is what is? What are you wearing? Is that are you the clown at your own birthday party? Are those polka dot pants? Uh, so they decide to go and dance. And if you can't tell, Crush is supposed to be very punk rock, man, like very metal, right? So she doesn't know how to dance. So she just goes out there and starts head banging, right? But it's okay because her boy, uh, girlfriend is like totally cool with it and shit, bro. So then they just start like moshing together and then they like air guitar and then they're so in love. Oh, I wanted to burn this book. I swear to God, I don't ever advocate for the burning of books, but maybe this one. So after that, they go back and the parents are still being all creepy or whatever. So she decides to like take off. She says she has to go do a thing. Okay. So she takes off to go do her thing. And then on her way out, she's having this whole little like moral dilemma, I guess. She's like saying like Teen Titans Academy has this protocol that may be relevant to mention here, which is this whole thing about decontaminating after a battle with any intergalactic creature with a known history of chemical warfare. Because you never know what you're bringing away from battle, blah, 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 chemical residue, blah, blah, consequences. So whatever, residue, maybe plus vanilla candles equals a bad time, obviously, right? So she has to run back to go and save the day, sort of. So she runs in and of course everybody's like starting to freak out. They're trying to like get out as she's running in. So she's like telling them like, okay, yeah, run. I think that is the best solution for y'all. So Katie and her parents are coming out and everything. Right. And then of course she goes up and has to confront crush. Oh my God. So I'm not even going to entertain reading any of this. So basically she just ends up telling her like, you know what? I need you to leave. Like you ruin the whole party. So you just need to go piss off. So she leaves, she goes back home, and then Emiko Queen Red Arrow shows up and is trying to, like, get her to come and open the door. And she doesn't want to open the door. So she says, like, open up or I will buy you a welcome mat and staple it to your... So she comes out and says, Red Arrow, how can I help you? Because I guess that part was funny. The whole part about her threatening to staple a welcome mat to some part of her anatomy, I guess? That was enough to get her to come out. So... She goes inside and then she's like talking about, oh, so you destroyed her party and she broke up with you. And she's like, yes, do we have to go on and on and on about it? She's like, I literally just came in and that was the first thing that was said. So she's like, don't bring up my dad or whatever. So she says, I didn't mention your dad either. What the hell's going on? So Crush is all freaking out. And then she has this flashback to when she was growing up and she was she had these parents who were like raising her. Because she only has half of Lobo's like actual um, hair, like genetics. The other half, I think, is still a mystery. We don't know who the mom was. But anyway, she's talking about him. And she's talking about how he's like the last Zarnian because he killed all of the other ones, right? We all know that about Lobo. What's surprising is that he just hasn't straight up killed her yet. I haven't really read much of like Crush's backstory because I don't care that much about the character. Like we didn't need girl Lobo. We really didn't. We had Lobo. And y'all have been like... Ever since what happened when y'all tried to reboot him in the New 52 with that redesign, y'all have just been fucking with the character since then. So, I mean, I don't know why you decided to, like, make this. There was no point. There really wasn't. There was absolutely zero point, except to make Lesbian Lobo. So that's what we have. So Lesbian Lobo is having a hard go of it right now. And is still very upset when all of a sudden there's this, like, communication that comes from her dad and so he's doing this thing where he's in prison right now apparently and he's like telling her like yeah you know i haven't always been a good dad or you know a dad period or whatever but i'm in therapy right now and there's this whole like program right or whatever where you can come down and like we can hash shit out through therapy so i want you to come down i don't expect you to think anything will like good will come of it for like what 
What do you say? Look, kid, there's a program here for kids with parents for me. If you wanted to come, it's totally up to you. I know it would help me. Maybe it would help you too. So he's just telling like anytime you want to come by or whatever. So she just goes on like bitching about like, and just all of this like nonsensical crap that really doesn't mean anything. She has all these travel mugs for no reason, which is supposed to like signify that she can't really like settle and commit like to anything. So she's always like trying to be on the go on the run. <sighs> doesn't matter. So she finally decides, obviously, that, yeah, she's going to go ahead and go through with it. She's going to go see her dad. So she's shown up, I'm assuming. And so the, like, robot or whatever is bringing him in saying, okay, you have your meeting. Your appointment is, like, here or whatever the hell. So getting ready to do that. And then she ends it by saying, like, okay, end of issue. What do you want? A parade? Thanks for reading. See you whenever the next one comes out. I'm not in charge of these things. And I'm not either. I really don't care about this book. This was such a terrible story. What was this? Who, who was I supposed to want to like see anything from here? You didn't make Lobo interesting. You kind of just barely shoehorned him in at the end. This whole thing between Crush and her girlfriend didn't care. It was Katie's uh, birthday. Didn't care. She ruined the party somehow. I don't care. Why was any of this supposed to have been interesting? You put Lobo in this, I guess, just to get people like me who actually care about Lobo to buy the book. But in reality, it was all about crush and her boyfriend slash girlfriend so the one who dresses up as a clown at her own party i guess for the amusement of her guests oh god i get I, you know dc i know that you're you're intentionally shitting the bed at this point and i realize you're intentionally pissing on the pan on the fans at this point but do you do you have to do this to yourself i don't know i just i guess you know this is the the route they're going to take with this so whether i like it or not i guess i'm just kind of in for the ride so. <laughs> but i don't think i'm actually going to end up picking up this whole series after this after this first issue i don't really want to i'll probably just try and read it digitally more than likely because there's i can't i don't even care about this character that much i like lobo but i don't care about crush enough to want to read her series featuring lobo you know what i mean so i'm just it's not for me. I really don't think it is. But if you guys have read this, I would love to know what you thought of this first issue of Crush and Lobo, Lesbian Lobo and Dad Lobo, I guess. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought down in the comments section. Like the video if you like the video and subscribe if you want to come back for more comic book reviews. But if you guys are done here, then go read a book. And if not, then I will see you on the next video.